In this video, I'm going to take folks through on how to start working with blueprints. To begin, all I made was a third person base project, and I just saved a new map called Hello World. Blueprints are a very vibrant way of working inside of the Unreal Editor and are also a way that for those who do not like straight programming, you can still get a lot done. One of the nice things about blueprints is that they are pretty much completely embedded in the engine, which means anytime that you drag a component into your level, it's going to have some form of connection that you can use to work with blueprints. So the big question is, is how can we get started making a basic blueprint? There's two ways. You can either construct the blueprint by pre-making the blueprint element and building it there, and I'll show you that one first, or you can actually lay out the different components you want to have in the blueprint in your game level and then convert it to a blueprint. There really isn't no right or wrong way between these two ways of making blueprint setups. It's really what you're most comfortable with. So for the first step here, I'm going to show you how you can make a basic blueprint without actually working in the, in the main level environment. To do this, you're going to be coming down to your content browser. You have two ways of actually starting this out. You can either just right click in your working area and here you can see you can create a basic asset for blueprint class. For those who prefer buttons, over here you have the add import where once again you can get to blueprint class. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this and it's always going to ask you for a parent class. For those who are brand new to working with blueprints in Unreal, the majority that you're going to probably be starting out with is the actor base class. These are the objects that can be placed inside the game level, and these are your more interactive elements. As you continue on and make larger games, yes, you will probably get more into pawn and character as far as AI and things like that. But to get started, we can do a lot with just the actor class. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And notice now down in the components area, it made a brand new blueprint for me. So I'm going to call this BP underscore, let's call this first blueprint. So you've now made a blueprint and we're ready to double click here and go in and work in the blueprint environment here. Now within our blueprint environment here, just to take you through a little bit, as I mentioned previously, you're going to have some form of component inside of the blueprint. Within our preview area here, you have this white sphere default. This is more of a way so that you can see the default of the blueprint, but this will not actually be visible to a user whenever you are testing your game environment. So over on the left hand side, the very top window here, we actually have a components area where I can actually click on this drop down here. And as you can see, you actually have a lot of different components that you can add in here. So for instance, maybe I grab the sphere. Notice how now under the components, it's in the default scene, but it's also now stored within the blueprint, which I can come in here now and notice over on the right hand side for details, I have a whole different area of different types of options here. So for instance, maybe I want to move this up a little bit and maybe we want to come in and I want to change the material option. I have those controls that I can do here. Likewise, maybe I want to come in under and add another component here. And let's go ahead and scroll through here and let's maybe look for a light type. So maybe I want to add in a point light into the environment here. So there you can kind of see me moving my point light. And once again, I can come in, I can kind of change as far as the radius is concerned. I can also change the color of the light. So come into that color picker over in the details and notice now how it keeps nesting that as far as the components are concerned. At this point, we can go ahead. We're not worried about the coding elements yet. So you can compile, you get a check mark. That's a good thing. You can save the blueprint 
And then we can X out of this just so we can see what happened here. And now you can actually see for the very first blueprint here that we've made, notice how the thumbnail image has updated. It's now showing the components that are stored inside that blueprint. So I can go ahead and just kind of click and drag this into the environment here. And there you can see my object is placed in there. And notice how whenever I'm interacting here, whenever I move it around, notice how all of the components that were stored in the blueprint move together. Likewise, one other thing to point out here along in the same vein is notice how it's a little bit different in your world outliner here. That you can actually come over now for type, it actually gives you a clicking option that you could actually click and it'll open up that editor for you for your blueprint and you can come right in and start editing again. So Unreal is recognizing that this is a blueprint. Likewise as well here, so I'll go ahead and kind of float this up here a little bit. You can also duplicate and now place multiples of your blueprint in here. So now just a real quick play here so you can see it. You can see that both of the blueprints are here and you can actually see it kind of affecting as far as the player character. Notice that the spheres themselves inherited as far as the meshes go, those were pulled in as well. I didn't have to set those up or anything. But what I'd also like to show you here is, let me go ahead and X out of this, is I still have capabilities now that I can come in and work with these individual objects here as far as going in and editing them. So just to give you a for instance here, I can actually still come in under the details. And because my UI is so large, you may have to scrub down a little bit to actually see the blueprint elements here. But I can actually come in here now and you see how I, even though it's a blueprint, I can come in and actually edit each individual blueprint. So I'm not locked in with the blueprint that if there is for one, some reason I want this extra element here to have a blueprint color for the bulb as yellow, I can still do that. But then if I drag a third instance out, notice how once again it's referring back to that default blueprint. Now if I come in though, and let me go ahead and double click to come back into the viewport here, maybe I decide I want to add in another another point light here. So maybe now I'll have, oh, go ahead and drag this out. Maybe it'll be a point light on the side here instead. And we'll take this down to maybe 500. And I'll compile and just save this. Actually, we'll do one more thing here just so it really is visible. We'll do a bright, a bright cyan here. Pile, save. You see now, notice what happened to all three of these. So within the game environment, I can come in and for each of these individual objects, I can come down through here and edit specifically for the instance of that blueprint object, but then I can still go back into the original blueprint and I make one change in one location and it's reflected in all the locations and references here. So this can make life really easy as far as going through and creating blueprints that way. Now the other option though for working with blueprints is let's say on the flip side, maybe I have, we'll keep using kind of the basics here, but maybe I have a cylinder that I'm structuring out and maybe I say that I need this to be a pillar of some type. So we'll drag this up a little bit. And I need something to happen with this pillar whenever uh, the player actually comes and interacts with it. So I say, you know what, I also need kind of a box trigger as well. So I'll place that. And so I start building this out a little bit and then I realize, okay, you know what? I'm actually ready now that I would like this to be a blueprint. So I get my objects set up in my work environment here. And if you use the control click, you can see now in the world outliner, I have both of these objects selected. So what I'm saying here is these are the two components that are going to go into my new blueprint. Now that I have them highlighted, I can come up to the blueprint button here and the little arrow next to it. 
There is a second option here called Convert Selection to Blueprint Class. So I select this. It's going to say, hey, what do you want the name to be? So I'm going to go ahead and tell it uh, maybe BP Selected Components. You can change as far as the path is concerned. Since it's going directly into my game folder, I'll leave it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and say Select. And now, just to show you here, notice what happens here. You now have the brand new component in here that has now been structured based off of those selected elements there. So now if I go ahead, I'll save one more time just to make sure and X out. Here's that selected components blueprint class that you see now I can drag out and notice it's the same elements together. So now I have the capabilities that I can go in and add additional scripts onto my objects here. So those are the two main ways that you can actually get started with creating basic blueprints. Really, it's up to you which way you want to work. Neither way is correct, neither way is incorrect. So it is up to personal preference. I would say practice with a few levels and try creating the blueprints in different ways, either just through the content browser or by placing the objects and then using the blueprint button to convert the selections to a blueprint class. They will still get you to the same end point.